So good morning, everyone. Thank you for getting up a little bit early to listen. We didn't want to, didn't want to collide with all the other, other talks as well. Uh, this is the AMA, which is more of the AUA aspect. Um, so it's my first time we, we, we uh, go out and ask people, like, hey, what's this? The first thing is, like, who are you? What are you doing? So before we get into this, I'm going to give a quick overview of who, who we are about this. Chancellor, you are actually the steering committee of Thomas, and that means that if we screw up, it's your fault. Um, 
last one is our role with LF is to try to uh, influence and uh, various resources to help support what the community does. And a lot of this, um, not a lot behind the scenes work that 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 is on it, so people may or may not be aware. So, but I think what everybody is aware of is this is the kernel that works in this country, and and kernel how some of these mass mailing lists that these people are posting, but like it's just it's it's more than a full time job. I think you can't hear the mic over there, but Lucas is asking what the status was on hand pages if there were some funding issues for the meeting. I mean, well, I saw, like, you were talking about something we got to pay the funding for. What's becoming very, very clear is that there is um, a, a number of work that needs to happen to support uh, general community outreach. DLF is, of course, already working on working out with documentation. The Linux page maintainer is another one of these. Uh, it seems pretty clear we need to do more to support the tracking. This is still very much work in progress, but this is actually what the LF was founded to do, right? So the goal is working with companies to 
she's listening to talk about the QDLF so that we might be able to um, hire some identified uh, people as contractors to do this that supports the entire community. And it seems pretty clear to me that the case of the integrity of regression tracking is a critical contribution to the whole community. We should be relatively easy to convince companies to uh, uh, that's in so, you know, stay tuned. And is it driven by the Linux community or by the tab vendors? Goals or uh, how does the tab define its agenda? And is it driven by the Linux community or by the tab vendors? Goals or goals? Uh, what are the answers? Uh, first, the tab members are members of the community, but we do our job by keeping an ear to the ground and hearing what the community seems to be expressing that they want. Do the do the extent that you have some direct ideas about things that you think are pain points that maybe we collectively can do to make things better, or we need um, help from uh, a number of companies? Do you think we can do that directly? What we do is try to keep an ear out and see, you know, what he's doing. Uh, I like to add. Um, but by the way, um, there's ten of us in the tab. Five of us are elected every year, so it's a two-year term. Uh, the elections are going to start uh, tonight, I believe. Yes, and the uh, we have some people in. And one thing that uh, I want to make a point: for some people don't like. There's a lot of people I know like, oh, I don't know if I want to be on the tab or not. To know what needs to be done in the community, we need to know what needs to be done in the community. By that, I mean we need to be beggars. Uh, we need some different points of view. So, if you think that you know you represent a part of the community where you could actually come to the tab and say, "Hey, everyone, Linux Foundation, we have this community that's being forgotten. Run to the tab and try to let people know that." So, the tab is only as good. As the people that are on it that know what's going on. If we don't know what's going on, we're not going to be able to you know, help out or really get the resources to help out. So the job of the, the, job of the tab is to be, like I said, as we said several times, the um, representative of the community. But if we don't have people to come to so I want to be that representative, we're not going to tap as much there. Thanks. The diversity is a couple different ways. I mean, this is a fairly maintainer heavy people. And we, one thing we lack is a lot of things that we could be doing with that. And so that point of view is also really important. So it would be, and also, we've also been doing this for a long time. So having new people on that, I think would be great. Does it work? Yeah, okay. Uh, in that case, shouldn't there be like term limits for the TAP members to maybe like one or two terms to make sure that there are some fresh people every now and then? Okay, first of all, we'll get you throwing lessons. The design of the tab, the, the problem with an organization like this when it was first founded is that it's actually very difficult to persuade people to get on it to speak the point. So um, if you introduce term limits, you found a good chance of actually not having a representative body. It's, it's the same dilemma as you have in American politics, right? Everybody says term limits is just a the box that everybody has a position, but in reality it won't. So what you have to do is trust that the people on here are sensible enough to recognize when they should give way to kind of basis. Yeah, so we should do it by, by uh, uh, skill than coercion. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad idea that you don't need to have term limits in the sense that you can only do it two times and then you're out. I mean, you could also say that, for example, you need to pause after you have like three consecutive terms or something. 
I mean, the charter is up to you, but if you want to introduce it, you can. Actually, one thing I've noticed that this is, first of all, last year, we, this is what I just wanted to talk about, this is what I had my way around. And we only, the four other people submitted this one, and we never got a fit. So actually, we had to go back, I think, to the or someone in the crowd, I think that's what happened. We actually, I think it's actually a final card run in the reception because we didn't have enough people to actually come in. Well, there's no, that's true. But there's also, I don't know if you know this, but there's several, uh, I think it's a pleasure to agree, held off, a lot of the time members that have been there for a long time, held off and wait to see, you know, is there a good representation structure that I want in the cab? And if there is, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to run. I want to put, I want to uh, go behind that person. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? That's happened several times where someone actually on the cab said, I'm not going to run. I wanted to uh, try to go and get this car completely over. There's a corollary question for the first question, which is, given your, your state of need for diversity in the community and your state of need for indigenous community representation, should the TAB have a curated, appointed uh, set of people as well as an elected set of people? Would that help with the balance of the recruitment problem? Well, we actually to get, like, almost like alternatives in, like trying to get the people you're giving that talk now. I mean, you've demonstrated how it's got a gender, which is, oh, I, that's a good idea. We should talk about it. Did he resolve on the list? Okay, we didn't resolve it on the list. Now we're going to talk about it in person. So, yeah, good idea. Yeah, I think one of the cool things that we probably need to do more of is when there are various tech projects to recruit people not to have a number one. We're all busy, right? So, uh, to the extent that we can get people actively involved uh, doing tech projects, then they're exposed to what the tech is doing and they're more likely to actually benefit the tech. Uh, so, I think that's actually one of the things that we should do a lot more of. It's something that the you know, Wave Point Planning Committee does as well, for example. Uh, and the other thing I mentioned is some of us may have been up here for a long time. Many of us have actually dedicated our lives um, for the benefit of the number of that You know, all of us have not been continuously serving on the path. That's off uh, at least once, maybe twice, but that does happen. Only four weeks in here. Okay. <laughs> On the list here. There have been a lot of contributors uh, and companies in India that uh, love to the West India. Uh, could you call us with the list of the contributors that have received the year around it so we can help them with the culture? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so we're having an event in December. Uh, with the CNCF organization is hosting an event in Delhi. I think it's like December. December 12th, I think is the day. Um, but we can co-locate events to sort of dip our toe in the water and start working with the community there. And so, I mean, yeah, let's do that question. Please follow up, and we would love to do it. And I think the biggest challenge is just getting the local community folk engaged to help us navigate, uh, you know, different communities that are in India. But I'm all for it. So. I think I know the possible questions, but I can just look at it and have these conversations. One of the things that actually has gotten a lot of conversation is the issue of visas. Uh, you know, we are a global community, and so sometimes it's hard to get you up from India or China or Korea to get visas going to Canada, the United States, and Europe. Uh, and so that actually is one of those things that we do sort of look at. Uh, it's especially challenging for community events like Flatlands. Where micro conferences tend to get organized a little bit later, and so uh, when people find out that oh, there's some really interesting stuff, I really need to be a speaker at that event. Um, depending on where you're from, uh, you know, you may need six, nine plus months before you can actually get a visa. And so, if that is in fact one of the challenges, uh, and it 
may very well be that if we want to do more of those types of events, we actually have to start a planning cycle much, much earlier. And for those of you in the room with my costumes runner, that means you, you know, you would need to help us. Well, also, let's be frank about the problem. It's, it's usually people who hold Russian and Chinese keys have difficult to every country in the world. We, three and the Plumbers Planning Committee, to find a list of countries where they could get easy free travel so we might be able to hold plumbers. A uh, top contender was Georgia. To be speaking, it looks like a great place to hold a conference, and both Russians and Chinese can get easy access. The next one down on the list is actually Thailand. It turns out that Russians and Chinese can get easy access to Thailand. India, if we hold a conference there, is actually even more difficult for Chinese people to get easy access just because the Indians have so much trouble with the rest of the that they reciprocate. The Caribbean is actually really good to get these out of the We were in Hong Kong two or three weeks ago. We got lots of people to do this because they're easily to find because they're easy. The rest of it, they're easy. And then we're going to be in Japan again. And we also held in North America, Europe. So we do have one next conference in good places. Almost everybody can go to the next yeah, and I think we can also, it's not quite official yet, but we can announce that probably Tokyo will be the next presentation uh, for the next Plumbers Conference. So we are going to try a. Uh, so basically, you are any sort of human being now and tell them to start talking about the budget for travel. Hey, hey, can we have that one for the record? I think that we've been discussing on it, but your work on the chat, as a chat member, your available time for checking on channel posts, doing reviews, etc. The chat is only one meeting a month. It's an hour. So why don't you only one hour? Hey, Tim. I have been asked, but I, I name is technical advisor. <laughs> name is technical advisory board. I am not sure if I am. No, competent enough to. 
you're a leader, whether you're you want to talk to influence we have. Dan, as chair of the TAP, goes to the other uh, board meetings. So that should tell you something right there. Um, I think what many of us do as, you know, part of being on the TAP is work with our engineering management at our companies to try to encourage them to support the LF in various ways. Um, and that's, again, one of the ways where the company's uh, interest Met a lot of current developers who don't hesitate to do that. Hey, Jim, the community would like this or that, which I think are okay. I mean, you want to help, like, that's the whole role. Uh, and then I'm like, well, who in the community? Well, I don't want to say, I'm like, just give me a couple people. Like, well, I'm like, what do you do? Yeah, we're open. Like, we definitely want to hear what people need and what kind of support is requested. I want to go back to the same time. I think it's a lot of people. the way to fill the annual meetings when I was a Catholic. Maybe I don't have to be sure that the community is going to be back to the community. And just on the point of qualification for the time. It is true that the tab is primarily created to assist with what the community would consider the critical problems that we have outside of the That's part of the job to try and look at the politics of the way to do. The flip side of that is that if, unless you become savvy in politics, you don't really rise up something all trust as well. So it's a very useful skill but to develop sort of this maintainer because it helps keep your Order, but also to the skills to get to the end. And to some point, uh, one of the big problems we actually have in the industry to is an expanded problem is it's an industry problem. We have two huge senior actual Linux code in companies. So there are almost no big companies people. And this means that there's a sort of plastic gap between uh, what the community could do with and the huge advice the huge people are getting. And until we bridge that gap, there's also going to be a mismatch in terms of what the company doesn't do, do, do like, simply because we don't have enough seniority to have what the case. So your mission, all of you that you choose to accept it, is trying to rise up the old part of your company. You're not all going to succeed, but you should all be trying. <laughs> That it I see that people in the corporate matter sort of shift up to the corporate 
what the actual problem or most of the time I do if you have a if you have a business practice that I think that's sort of difficult to 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 get a hand on so you lose the impact that you have in the community. I didn't. So it's not impossible to get it becomes harder and harder for higher you get. But usually um when you're employed at a senior level in a company, it's sort of like an open source crypto book. So you provide the advice, and often you get free reign to do work on a lot of what you want to do. And usually, if somebody got the coding, not because the uh, job as vice president was a force of it, it's even because they were depressed. So it's a sort of life transition that people go through. My experience. My experience has often been just that like, certain points start to be medium, so it becomes sort of difficult to stick with your day job. But what do much of you have to do? The way one copes with this is one takes one's laptop into the meetings and they think you're typing notes, and in fact, you're typing code. I mean, it's very cool. You probably got lucky to have spot. There's a lot of companies where they do go up higher up the chain, they basically start making you responsible for the right one PowerPoint and things like that. And for those of us that are not really great at PowerPoints, I know you have all your magical uh, movie uh, presentations, but the, <coughs> which were all written in JavaScript. But anyway, <laughs> but I know you're a spot on for JavaScript and things. But the, um, uh, what's it called? I about that. The guys, I've actually come back to promotions time and time again, knowing that once they take that step, I don't have the time to do what I want to do, like in the community still. I'm not ready. I plan on once I'm done with that place, uh, I will do that. Okay. 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 Just let me push back a bit on this, because all companies who run a technology business have a key track management level. There's always an engineering track and a, 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 a sort of manager track. It is true that the engineering track cuts off at some point, which is often below the glass ceiling. So in order to get your influence high, you're going to have to switch over. But it's not impossible to start climbing the ladder on the technical track rather than the it's probably worth noting here, and there are a number of us who have actually driven, I'm not on the management track, but I am on the senior technical track, is as you work through the corporate technical track, it's true, you don't get to code anymore. You are in PowerPoint, you are trying to persuade tech leads in other teams to possibly report to work with VPs to all work together some big project. Now, if that becomes a little bit like being a maintainer, it is because you are essentially, you need to look at what everybody's stakeholders are, what their goals are, uh, and try to align everybody to work together when you don't have direct management, you know, you have to do this authority, right? You have to take role and, you know, try to get everyone moving in the same direction. And again, if you're a maintainer and you're trying to get developers working with different companies to all work together, your skills in the open source community will help you run the tech track. So what happens is, and it's true for me, I've talked to Paul Kenny, we don't have the code anymore as part of our day job. The place where we get the code is the open source work and let us run. And so we set this up like we have to keep coding. The fact that we, we do that in the open source world because our corporate job is putting tasks and putting PowerPoint presentations. So, <laughs> so the only thing that happens is the corporate job, uh, like the technical ladder, is that you get more time to choose what you're going to actually do. And that's I want to bring back to the path a little bit. Is that, I don't know what other people's experience has been, but being on the path is that something with that title that the company recognizes at some level. And that's actually given me some more freedom to do some more of the maintainer things that I want to do. So that's been one of the nicest parts of it, is that it's actually, I think, made me able to be a better maintainer. I, I guess I'm, I guess too much to show it more. Well, uh, so I, in the statistics from LWN for the last uh, couple of releases, 
to look at the number of commits uh, and which companies they are coming from. So I'm not talking about lines of code which are skewed uh, by stupid uh, graphics driver in group files. I'm talking about the number of commits. And consistently, over the last couple of releases, uh, the top spot for, uh, was uh, for Intel with about 15%. So that's a not insignificant number. And the number two spot uh, was at about 7 or 8%. And uh, the problem is Intel is not doing well. And the community has dealt with uh, companies going under in the past. So let's mention Sun Microsystems or Nokia, but it is always messy. Is there anything that the community, the community can do to, pre to prepare for or avert a disaster with regards to Intel other than buying more Intel CPUs? <laughs> And I think some of those corporate things aren't so easily, they're not always correct. But Intel can contribute in a selfish manner to solve the problems in that company. And so, large contributions is to make their chips work very well on their graphics, work very well. So, that's great. So, as you see, if you watch the numbers over the past 20 years, yeah, the company's ebb and flow and whatnot, but you look at, look at the software community and the number of new contributors that are coming in, the rate of change. And that's been constantly good for 10 years. And we've weathered, weathered the dot com boom, we've weathered these other things. Our boss is behind the boom thing. It's not only this. Yeah, we can work with the best of Intel, how they would work for their resources. We can talk to Intel about that. But as a community standpoint, we're very resilient. And we're spread out. We're spread out really wide. And I'll take the same but I mean, all of us have had everybody looking up here. Nobody has had I think worked for one company, and so that's one of the neat things about this community is that all of us have had this, this Linux like career that fits multiple companies. And yeah, it, it was super resilient. It only happens to one company. Some the, the people that are running the community just hop over another company and keep doing the job. So, so yeah, for companies really, the, the, the traditions move with the person. So we all switch companies and. have to understand that from a business point of view, when they submit patches is because they want franchise and where the particular piece of open source is going. And actually having a maintainer on staff is phenomenally helpful to them. And if you can sort of uh, explain this to your companies and get recognition for this. Well, well, I wasn't going to go on that, but the point is that it's easy to argue almost any corporate executive that having maintainers on staff is a very good way of doing that whatever the company can at least gets consideration in open source. You don't get to drop it through, but you get better consideration at the end of And that means that in a lot of companies that I've been to, one of the 
some of those things they do, but they eventually they get around to the idea that um, you give people sort of promotional credit just for being maintenance. So it becomes part of the job description of how, how was I successful this year? Maintainer? Oh, excellent. That accounts for a you know, significant amount of it. mentioned that a few years ago I saw these same statistics and actually Intel's contributions were way higher and so they've actually come down over the years and I've actually seen more democratization of the packets going into the kernel so as an Intel employee I'm actually not worried about it. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having this session because I put my name forward for the tab. I think it helped me, uh, to be honest, to understand how it works. I would like to ask you, um, uh, what's the trickiest, biggest challenge that the tab has ever faced? Well, not everybody has been here the whole time. <laughs> Um, I would say uh, you will try to contribute because that was something the community called out as a problem before the companies realized it. We went to the board, we said, This is a problem, but no, we don't use this. I'm like, and then they came back a few months later, Oh, wait, we all rely on this internally. Really. James took this on and did an amazing job. The pilot became part of the community project, committee. We worked with the two things to get an amazing job here. But that was. Uh, Realizing a problem for the companies in our community before it hit them, and they didn't realize it and rely on us to help solve the problem. And that was a lot of great building and a lot of work. And um, again, I'll say James did a great job. Yeah. The other really great thing about that particular example is that um, it required getting um, access to. Uh, documents that were under review. Um, and the model of UEF up to that point was very strictly company oriented. And so if your company was not um, a member of the UEF consortium, you can get access to these secret steps. And the LF had on board its legal magic to find 
find a way so that we can actually get access to people who wouldn't work for one of those companies. And that's yet another way of how the work has helped. So, yeah, along those lines, by virtue of that, I'll let this down here as my member. Cast members have access to that. They're new with the high school. We do those ones. Part of the UFI community and the UFI community changed their bylaws and rules to make it more favorable for us. So, they assumed with ACPI and ACPI actually even helped out even better. So, we actually made an influence on the industry to be more open and working together with the community. There's been great long term work. Good. Thank you. Thank you. What's the, what's the, um, so you all are on part of the LF and can get access to those documents, but what about the community in general? Um, we have ways well, if you don't work for me that's part of the UFI committee, so find as well, we have ways to help you get access to that. Okay. So far, we've only had to deal with one person because most everybody ends up working for somebody. Right. But we have I, I had an outreach intern at one point, too. Yeah. Interns are easier. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're part of the... You can do that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not anymore, but... <laughs> we have a system in which to do this the UFI board that wants this to happen, which is the key thing they realize that this is important. Yeah, yeah that person was me, by the way, because the company I was working for at the time was not that magic list. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also point out real quick that for influencing the direction of ACPI and EFI, that you know, this process code first. If you see something you want to change in EFI or ACPI, you can actually start talking about it in the open. And that's what you can do. This is what I think is going to be a topic. They can pull it into discussions. So we can see how that works. Yeah. But this is what we like to change. Just on the ministry to promote here, uh, I'm going to suppose since I start the microconference in 10 minutes, I don't know, maybe at least five minutes more. Who else do we need? Like, we said, doing a full hour. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have 10 minutes left. Thank you very much for your time, attention, and we'll